everyone. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday, where we sit back, mm -hmm. we relax, Yay. and we take that midweek break and talk about maybe some of the strange things, but definitely some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vin Stone. That is Joe Bryant. And mm -hmm. it's Pedro Mateus. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello hello pedro everyone watching us live uh listening to us after the fact man it's been a busy week a lot of people doing yes. a lot of stuff um if you follow me on the social medias on the twitters i oh man i don't know it might have been like thursday of last week I'm like i'm thinking about installing sin os I, I just want to give it a try not for the first time or anything it's like i want to see what version eight Preferably 8.2. I decided on 8.1 mm -hmm. for a couple of reasons to see how it would work as a workstation. It was fine. Um, Pedro helped clock it as I was doing live updates in Discord <laughs> on uh, Sunday afternoon. Like, you said, well, yeah. start the clock. I was like, all right, there's <laughs> a time, an actual timestamp on that message. So, yeah, consider it started. <laughs> My TTS for CentOS 8.1, which is time to Steam, which means I have that up and running. I have Vulkan, NVIDIA, and a game was, what, three hours, 13 minutes? Yep. And that's from sticking the uh, drive in the USB hole and watching it go. Easy enough setup. CentOS, if you're familiar with it, I grew up with Red Hat, so it's like, ah, just rip stuff out and put it back in what I want. The only deal breaker is it wouldn't be usable as a workstation because, like, first generation Blackmagic cards, the non 4K versions, just don't work because the driver won't compile for whatever. I didn't care mm -hmm. enough. I was like, you know what? We've had fun. Then I had to rebuild the audio stack and take care of stuff. It's doable. Like, if you had no other option, maybe. But yeah stick with debian for your workstation <laughs> um debian 10 highly recommended use it daily man how about you jill oh well i had a lot of fun again on english bob's youtube show eb and you lot live there's been so much linux news this week that it's just it's it was it was great to talk about it all and I was on uh, Big Daddy Linux Europe, Li Linux Live European Edition once again, and that's always a lot of fun. And we had <laughs> had fun talking with Rocco about our favorite ex window managers, because a lot of people thought I was crazy for using them. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Real quick, speaking of software, I almost forgot. Um, <laughs> there is a preview video for patrons up right now. If um, I meant to throw that in, if <laughs> you want to play with OBS and DaVinci Resolve without spending three hundred dollars on DaVinci Resolve, yeah, I'm going to show you how to <laughs> set that up. Well, I do show you how to set that up in OBS, so you can record to a native format, no transcoding or anything. Just droop, drop it around. So go forth and play with that. But Pedro, Mateus, <laughs> has a new toy. Yes, he does. I do. Kinda. And, uh, took, <laughs> took a couple Yay. of weeks to get here. Well, uh, and it had some issues with, you know, the stuff that was included in the shipping. But hey, it's a Pinebook. <laughs> it's a Pinebook Pro. Yay. And um, it looks really nice on the outside. It has absolutely no markings whatsoever. There's just like a sticker you here. Here's what I'm thinking is you need to change that. You need to clearly identify that as a Pinebook Pro, just in case somebody thinks about stealing it. They'll go, oh, that's all right. <laughs> I can get Nori to cut me out a stencil and I'll use the uh, really fluorescent spray paints that I have. <laughs> But yeah, I can no, put um, a Google Chrome logo on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that would devalue it. <laughs> but yeah, it's a Pinebook Pro and it works. There's were just a couple of issues because I didn't just order the Pinebook Pro. I also ordered the uh, NVMe adapter. And now you're wondering, why is that outside and not already inside? It's like, um, they forgot mm. the little ribbon cable. Oh. That plugs in here, <laughs> that goes into the motherboard. Yeah, that Whoops. was nowhere to be found. Um, Naturally, we had the... that discussion. Pedro told me that, and I was like, "You yeah. might be yeah. around the house, didn't you? Because I, I would have like start tearing. Stuff. I did. I like, Do we get anything? <laughs> oh, that I bet. Lines up. It's like I had a look at the pictures. It's like, oh, it's one of those ribbon cables. All right, that looks like one of the old LVDS cables for laptops. So 
let's go have a look. But they were all either too wide or too narrow, so mm. that didn't shake out. And they included two, not one, but two. U.S. power adapters <laughs> for the power supply. <laughs> and uh, I assume one of these was supposed to be a U.K. one, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> so I have to use the uh <laughs> Raspberry Pi 4 um charger, uh the little power supply that gives the exact 15 watts that it needs to charge it. So yeah. <laughs> Listen, okay. Happy times. <laughs> we, we, we can MacGyver around this situation. Do you have any nails? <laughs> <laughs> I do, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> oh, I'll, come on. I'll just use the pie charger. It's fine. I, it works. There's a small part of me that wants to see you stick nails into the mains. <laughs> <laughs> of course there is. It's yes. like, yeah, yeah pie yeah. charger. The type C connector. Yeah. All right. Away we go. <laughs> that works. Cool. <laughs> okay. Let's get into it. Uh, starting with on again, off again. Yeah. So this is awesome. This is a little utility called Simple Tasks. And it lets you manage your webcam and microphone in the in the task in the task a uh, simple taskbar app for GNOME or um you know e or or the GNOME derivatives and KDE and whatnot and make it easier to turn on and off your webcam or microphone without having to uh, do it manually. One, pull out your USB cord from your computer <laughs> for security on your webcam and uh, or uh, mute your mic. And, and it makes that much more convenient. Although, of course, you can do it with your your sound system controls. But it's just a really nice uh, little utility and it works pretty well. I installed it here on Ubuntu Mate and um, it works. Turns off that webcam. <laughs> One of the things you got to think about, man, a lot of people have always been paranoid. I'm like, hey, didn't Zuckerberg even have this? Yeah, but he probably just did. Sure. <laughs> I've never worried about it. If you spy on me and you see what I got going on in my house, that's on you, man. Those metal scars are not going to heal. Um, then you if I know. You want to see me shirtless and sweating? Right. That's what you're going to get. You're like, oh, by the way, the camera's on. I'm just going to start dancing in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have like no, I mean, outside of like, do you think about how many tablets and mobile devices you have? Like, okay, whatever. But like in here, man, the only camera I have is like, tied up to a wall that has to be plugged into an HDMI encoder and you have to put yeah. a fan on it to keep it from <laughs> <days>. <laughs> So that thing is only on when I'm like, do I, do I get a couple of minutes <laughs> to get it? Yeah. Like I, I never worry about it in the slightest. Yeah. Uh, my, well, this webcam also requires uh, an AC connection, and I unplug it when we're done with the show. So, mm. yeah. Uh, the No, this is nice. Uh, like, uh, Simple Tasks is really nice because you can enable your webcam and you can disable your webcam at a firmware level without having to reboot, go into the BIOS, change it. So, yeah, that that that's really nice. And most yes. people don't even <laughs> know where the webcam or the microphone uh, toggles are in the BIOS. So... That's nice. That's mm -hmm. actually really nice. <laughs> That's a handy utility. I mean, no, put yeah. that in there. Um, yes. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so. Ooh, ah. System D. Someone's system D still rubbish. <laughs> system D stingers. Ten, yeah, it's a decade. Most people, they don't really care as long as it works, you know? But, 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 someone needed an idea for an article. So let's pretend this is still an active heated issue, kids. <laughs> here's the dice at the end of the day check um if you didn't grow up with system d you don't like it you just don't don't pretend you do you know you don't you know <laughs> i saw you at the meeting we you know the anti-system d uh but if you only have to tinker with it like on occasion you genuinely dislike it but for the most part it works cool i'll admit that is it too big probably you know does it do too much <laughs> pedro Yes, fan. Um, uh, <laughs> SVCHost.exe? Anyone? Is it <laughs> going anywhere? Not a chance. Not going to happen. System D holdouts? Hey, I know you're out there. You know, you kind of like uh, I was back in the day, being a Pulse mm -hmm. Audio holdout. You know, I, I, I can bring a system up. I absolutely can. That doesn't have System D. Much like I can listen to music without 
you know, using Pulsar, you know, I can use Ulsa directly. No. But it's kind of foolish to do it in 2020, but more power too, you know. Um, varieties it's of like spice you want life. to run three terminal commands if you want to ha have more than one sound stream per sync. It's also. <laughs> yes. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I can't get heated. I, I fall into the category of what I said. Like, as long as I don't have to mess with System T and it's out of my way, I don't have to start anything with the system because that that's my approach is like long as i can still just like launch something after the system's up with a bash script i'm fine but as soon as i want to try to do something a little more complicated i can do it mm -hmm. i've done it i just don't like it and that's all there is to it <laughs> there, that's not to much of fair. an argument and i don't know if we could have a heated debate about it not really and that seems to be the thing that most people um have a contention with because with sysv in it is like yeah that all it did was launch a simple bash script with system d it actually tries to set everything with priorities with the way that they are supposed to launch it actually is a in its system not just something launching bash scripts so yeah but i uh, there is the argument especially with home d yeah. coming um that it is becoming mm -hmm. svc host.exe and <laughs> that's that's a bit of um an interesting time that we're all going to be having but you know what actually bugs me about system d oh do tell it's girlfriend when <laughs> it's when i shut down or i tell my computer to shut down and it's just stays there on uh, Plymouth. <laughs> no, it doesn't hang. It's it's Plymouth just giving the little twirly bit. It's like, all right, oh, what yeah. are you doing? You hit one of the arrow keys. It's like, oh, it's waiting for a process to um, die. Okay. One minute, 30 Your seconds, distro development. two minutes, three minutes. 90 seconds. <laughs> no, the, the default uh, seems to be 90 seconds for most uh, distros, and that's how long it takes until it times out and go, okay, this is not closing. We're killing it now. Yeah, if it doesn't die with a, you know on a system with a thirty seven hundred X and an NVMe drive, if it mm -hmm. doesn't die in ten seconds, yeah. another eighty seconds on top of that is not going to make a difference. Listen, all Even I'm Steam all I'm hearing is long. System D is optimism, and you hate optimism. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, but no, yeah, the if... thing I do, I usually change the timeout. It's like no, ten seconds. You wait 10 seconds. Look at Mr. Done. Fancy. I don't. I walk up to the computer and go, you know what? We got journal file systems now. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And usually that'll do a, let you do a quick shutdown if, anyways. You know, Jill, if, if I do that and it doesn't, I got, I got other problems. I probably have ghosts again. Yeah. So, no. <laughs> Something that probably will shut down when you tell it to. Wait, no, Joe, you got a little bit. Yeah. You, you've just been, yeah. you've been chilling out. <laughs> well, I was going to say that, you know, you're so so right about if you didn't grow up with it, you don't like it re regarding system D. And, you know, I definitely feel more pure using antics and dev one and enjoy taking Nopix for a spin. <laughs> and there's a reason why free of system D distros just run faster, especially on older machines. So it's it's definitely good to run non-system D on old machines. We'll and, talk about that in a moment. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just wanted to give a shout out to Dave McKay, who wrote the article. It's really well done. It, it, it's in-depth, articulate, and easy to read about the history and current state of System D. And I'll recommend it to people learning Linux. It's excellent. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Oh, that, it's System D. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a thing. It exists. It's just, just going to deal with it. Be like, okay. You know, Red Hat's behind it, so I'm like it's not going anywhere. Yeah, the Fedora yeah. started pushing it with Fedora 15, and you know there, there, were, yeah. there was an attempt. They're like, "Hey, upstart, get that out of here." Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think Fedora was using it, but Susie did use Upstart for a while. But yeah, that didn't. Yes, man, stick if, if, around. I if you get a Susie box that boots, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Run an update on it and try to do that trick again. Um, 
I'm kidding. We love Susie. A little bit. Yes. All right. Now, you, oh, here we you go. hipster, you <laughs> fixie writing, I, I don't know what else hipsters have. Um, I don't, I don't <laughs> have curly hair and I don't speak with a French accent. <laughs> no. do, wait, hang on. Hang on. We, 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 we got to talk about, does, does Nori have a curling iron? She has a straightening iron. Oh. Not a curling one. Boom. <laughs> oh. but, yeah, no, uh, this is Haiku, and uh, it is one of those operating systems that have been sort of lurking in the background of the interwebs for so long now that it's almost ubiquitous. And I've tried, like, every single release that they have. I've installed it, and mm -hmm. I've tried it, and I've complained about it, because there's usually something that doesn't work. And, uh, yeah, once again, I uh, put it on my uh, cheapo Lenovo V5080. This is my favorite thing in the world, because I want this. <laughs> I, want the, I, I want to wish this mouse, this gerbil, into existence. The actual physical yes. mouse. Yes. Yeah. I want that. <laughs> I have one that, that has four buttons like that in my collection. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it uh, it does install, and uh, yeah, on that cheap Lenovo laptop, which was the laptop for two weeks after I moved to the UK, that was the one laptop uh, that I had, was the one computer I had. And uh, I'm going yeah, it, through this right now, Pedro, and I am genuinely having like <laughs> mid, no, no, like 98, 97, 98, 99 Linux screenshot flashbacks. Just by uh, the yeah. Yes. <laughs> what they don't screenshot is the screen smearing because there is no compositing. There is no um, uh -huh. 3D hardware acceleration on the desktop at all. Uh, most of the uh, hardware, well, software acceleration that you do get is all LLVM based. Um, hardware support is... It's got NVMe support. Touch and go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does have NVMe support, and uh, it actually does support uh, high DPI uh, displays now, even if you have a laptop that had a 1080p screen with a couple of versions ago, if you tried to boot it in 1080p mode, it would just um, draw you a little obscene picture, but nowadays it actually works properly, uh, although... Sometimes when you try to boot in 1080p mode, the screen goes all crazy, and all you have to do is restart it again, get into Grub, change the boot to, like, I don't know, 1280 by 1024, and it boots in, you know, the wrong aspect ratio, but it boots. Tell me about the browser. Yeah. <laughs> the browser is what they call web positive. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it... Um, it sounds it makes... contractible, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it does. Uh, and it makes Midori look competent by comparison. It desperately needs uh, some Firefox or some Chromium. Yeah. Well, literally anything else, please. Oh, God. <laughs> I couldn't keep track Aww. in our Discord, but I'm well, it's guessing... Well, better than it... NetSurf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've always used on Haiku. I saw a couple. I saw you, I think Arthur and someone else. Daisy. <laughs> Daisy. It turned into like yeah. a Haiku install fest in our Discord. Yeah. Uh, who was it that said it got there eventually? They loaded Discord on it. Uh, that was Arthur and uh, oh, well, yeah. loading it through the browser. They, apparently it took a while <laughs> for it to load. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, even if you try to open like a YouTube video, 720p is the best you're going to get, at least on an i5 uh, from two years ago. Mm -hmm. That's the best you're going to get. <laughs> the, um, yeah, no, the, that browser needs changing. Yeah, hey. definitely. <laughs> hey, but BOS love, it's giving BOS lots of love. So I've, you know, I've always been really excited about this uh, independent distro because of that continuation of BOS, a distro that I... Uh, pretty exclusively year, used for almost a year so i was i'm was really excited it took about you a this project whole year to figure out it wasn't any good oh <laughs> <laughs> well i wanted i wanted to to live that lifestyle you know back in the microsoft days so it was nice to have something independent <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, i have it installed on hey. yeah that that lenovo b5080 is just running haiku now oh, i and definitely like, looked at it button, man yeah. like haiku seconds. bos back in the day always had like the neat factor like looking at this like that's it's beautiful neat but i couldn't do anything with it. i couldn't get work done 
Ah, no, I used to be able to <laughs> run a lot of my animation apps on it. There were, were a bunch of hacks to get them to run. So without any 3D acceleration, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> like I said, I could do have work Mesa, done. but it's all software. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, everybody, that's the the new new thing these days, man. You know, you like get like sparkly cowboy boots, then you make a laptop with an AMD processor. Yep. Uh, and uh, it seems that uh, Tuxedo bit, beats uh, System76 to the punch by just a couple of weeks. Because yes. we talked about the, um, what was it, the Tuxedo XA15, which was, you know, a monster of a laptop that you could customize with up to a 3950X and a 2070. And now System76 has the Serval WS, which looks very similar to that laptop I was just describing, uh, because it's the exact same <laughs> laptop. And uh, they do have more limited um, hardware choices. You can only pick uh, up to a 3900X, Is more limited to double night. Uh, hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, you can mm. only pick up to a 3900 um, and a um, That's the... 2070. Yeah. That's, That's the 12 core. I've yeah, that. Whatever yeah. that is, is the opposite of thin. <laughs> yeah, no, it, a, it, it is, again, it, it's it's mm -hmm. the exact same laptop, and I said the previous one was a chunky boy, and this one a chunky boy it is. Uh, but yeah, I suppose limiting the amount of uh, different configurations that you can have will allow them to support the different builds better. So I guess you're trading that bit, that extra bit of limitation for the extra support that you're getting from System76. And the price is very similar to what um, Tuxedo was offering. So yeah, it, it is mostly, if you want to go all the way up to the 3950X. <laughs> no, no, um, no, I'm building, uh... I'm legitimately building one that I would consider using for DaVinci Resolve, at least, on the go. So I would have... Continue nice. talking while I'm doing this. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, it it is... Uh, it, it's System76, so you will get all, all of the support, and you can buy exactly how many years of support you want. So yeah, it is the exact same laptop that we discussed two weeks ago, but with a System76 badge on it this time around. And that's okay with me. We need more Ryzen laptops when it comes to, you know, the Linux uh, shops. All the Linux shops need at least one Ryzen laptop. And if it is going to be a desktop replacement, make it a good one. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, I, my price uh, for kind of a, a minimal of what I would like was around $2,063 for a system that I can render with uh, Blender and Maya and DaVinci. So that was... Uh, it was, a, it's a fair price, honestly, because you know, I'm I'm using a an ASUS Republica Gamers, and originally that machine was almost three grand. So <laughs> this is this is actually, yeah, because it's a, the AMD Ryzen, it makes the price cheaper. It's nice. <laughs> I don't mind. I mean, it, it's very fairly priced, and this is a, a good option for people in the states, especially because if we're looking like yeah. tuxedo, <laughs> that. That costs a bit to get ship over, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. the tuxedo are based in Europe and yeah. the yes, right. are based in the US. So that's something you <laughs> yeah. need to keep in track. And, you know, something like a system that I've, it's like an emergency system, you know, in case of like everything is on fire. Yeah, it's just, you're going to run about two grand and that's going to get you, you know, something 16 gigs and get you an NVMe drive and, you know, a 2070 mobile. So it'll get you through in a pinch, you know, or. Oh, yeah. You know, it depends on how you want to look at it. Like for me, I was like, eh, I could get away with that. Mm -hmm. But for like productivity, gaming, yeah, that's great. I'll get it yeah. done. That's fine. Great Plus, machine. you can get the support. You get a problem. Ring, ring. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Papa West is best, Wes. <laughs> no, it's only that's mess with him. That's, no. that, that's, that's when our, I get Pedro on the here. phone. I'm like, Pedro. <laughs> 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 what? No. <laughs> <laughs> she's adorable Papa. sometimes she's like no that's our <laughs> meme i'm like oh you're trying to yeah. make it a thing that's cute that's your thing uh oh wait we did at scale <laughs> <laughs> it can be a me one person and... meme that's yeah, fine it can, yeah, man. So... It's team me, dude. no i want to call Matthew. um 
Strider, Lutris, and seven, Emma, eight. and Patrick Mir in chat. That's cool. <laughs> but this is a show that's not that right now. <laughs> okay. I'm just throwing it out there. It's it's cute. Let's we get, love uh, System Seventy Six. <laughs> let's get Haiku and um, installed on one and call him up for tech support. Oh God, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to install Haiku on the. Oh no! I got it server. installed. I got it installed. We, <laughs> we, 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 we got to be setting up new step or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't need new step. It's already got a very step looking um, desktop environment. You mean next step? But, yes. <laughs> yeah. And um, we can well, do. I, I my my end game is to get get hung up on. By tech support. Mm. Well, that's easy mm -hmm. enough to do if you start swearing at them. No, 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 no. That that's the lazy way out. <laughs> you just drop them in, and it's like you end the sentence, you drop one in, and you start another sentence very quickly. Uh, and they go like, "Did I mishear that?" <laughs> so, who's shipping elementary OS? Um, two uh, Linux uh, laptop sellers are shipping elementary OS, and uh, Cassidy James, the co-founder and CXO of uh, Elementary, is uh, well Star Labs. Um, bringing up Star Labs, that's the one at the top there, which is a very good-looking laptop, to be honest, and um, laptop with Linux, which. If you go and have a look at the actual laptops, they're just like, oh, they're very similar. Yeah, and you've probably seen those designs as well with other brands, maybe even the Clevo brand, but whatever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> laptop with Linux one is a 17.3, uh, they have two, they have the 14 inch one and the 17.3 inch one, and that's, seven, that's the 17.3 one right there, it's like, the, okay, that that's a monster, and it looks good, and that's, uh, I... I guess that is uh, also how I would describe elementary OS itself, because it it's it feels to me very similar to Deepin. It, they are very pretty and mm -hmm. they are very focused on their design approach, and they will make sure that the system respects that design approach. Everything that's on the system will do it, but. I don't like being railroaded. If I wanted to be railroaded like that, I'd be using Windows. So yeah, I did try Elementary a while back, and while I was using it, it was exactly like using Deepin. It's like, I don't want to go down yeah. that road. I think I'm just going to install Gentoo, so at least I have a choice. <laughs> yeah. Well, it definitely, Elementary OS definitely has the beautiful Mac OS look and feel, and it's really, really great for beginners. So and it, and it's got a, a tremendous amount of adoption because of that. And um, their universal app center is really really uh, great. Um, you know, other distros can can use their app center, which integrates everything, uh, flat packs and app images and and debs and everything in between. So it's a really good uh, distro for new people, and it's it's giving love to the community. So it's really cool. That's uh, something that we've been lacking. It's good to see more and more <laughs> of is the software shipping with the hardware backed up with support. That's the yes. important yes. thing. Yes, definitely. However, I'm genuinely curious. Is there some type of punishment that one receives as a company for taking a picture of your product, be it a laptop, without photoshopping the screen? <laughs> are you just not allowed to photograph this it's, it's, this is like some requirement i'm aware of uh, i think it's the um lcd the inherent blurriness of an I, lcd I, and the I, camera I can, lens. <laughs> with a decent piece of glass i can show you how to iris that down so it looks really good and we can you know <laughs> set a long exposure on it it'll come out great as it'll or look a lot better you just than take... <laughs> Like that. Or you just take a picture yeah. of the laptop and then you shoot the desktop poorly. shortcut on it. Always poorly. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, you can see that the laptop, the edges are slightly out of focus and then the desktop is crisp. Yeah. That, I, I am just saying that inspires something in me, just probably not what you'd think. Um, 
<laughs> you could always make a video of it. Hey, this is from uh, Mozilla Open Labs, man. I just ran across this. I wanted to give the project yeah. a little bit of a mention. What is this thing? Video transcoder. It's an odd idea that, well, quite frankly, I want to like. It's using WebAssembly to do all the computation locally. So, you know, no security issues, no need to upload files. Unfortunately, there's no support for AV1 or VP9, right? It's basically MPEG-4, MPEG-2. That's what you got. That's what you can play with. You know, I guess I could eventually mm. see this being handy in a situation like with a lockdown where you could not install handbrake or in that case yeah. FFM bag. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, this, this is one of those things of like, this is going to be useful one day for something. I just don't know what yet. Yeah, well, it has a potential of being uh, faster because it is using FFmpeg much faster than the other online YouTube video upload converters, which sometimes take forever. Well, <laughs> if I'm going to be sending something to, like, if I'm going to be shooting something up to Amazon, you know, I'm going to be paying for it um, for CPU time cycles, I wouldn't like, a, I guess there's companies out there that are like, here, we'll drag, drag it into Handbrake for you. Um, <laughs> you know there <laughs> <Yeah>. are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't. It's like, why don't you just use our from pack? You know, it's human readable command. That's a lie. I know it is. Um, <laughs> you just get used to it. Uh, but th this could be. I don't know. Like just drag and drop. I help me out. Feel free to send some email because this is trigger something. It's like that's there's got to be a use case for that. Um, say if you don't want to be tracked on the tubes, or you don't want to be tracked on, um, any mm. video hosting site, so you pull but down the... You're also converting video, that, like, your goal here is I need to get some, it's just, I, it's a good thing I'm not being tracked on YouTube right now, but I gotta get this video converted, Pedro. <laughs> well, there, there, there is a market for online video editors and online graphics programs. So it, it, it web-based uh, video the, editor. This yeah. well, this would be good for Google Chromebooks. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you know that was a perfect good suggestion. That was very. That's very good, Jill. Uh, right up into the point. I was like, yeah, you know, Chromebooks. Right on. I'm like, oh, nope, never mind. You can get a handbrake as an app now. Yeah, it is. Yes. <laughs> Like, <laughs> I don't know. You're still running it through the Linux compatibility thing, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thought I would give it a mention. Uh, hey, it makes as much sense as our next story. Yay! <laughs> and this, I, I was, I, I've played with this distro before. It's what it, it, it's really cool. This is PsychOS Linux. It's a 32-bit free of system D Devon based distro for us rest, retro computer collectors. Yes, yes. And and it and what's really cool about it is it includes all the software you need just in case you don't have internet access for your old computer. And it also has a really wonderful. Package manager manager called RetroGrab for installing Linux and DOS software. Linux Insider, uh, your web zone sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you know, go check out their website. It's definitely psychos psychosdelic. <laughs> That's what I'm calling Seriously, it. Seriously, you have a very poorly done website. Um, <laughs> oh, it's old school, then. It no, makes no. A lot of fun. <laughs> no, no. React. That's not old school at all. I'm talking about that Linux Insider's is, uh, website. Yeah, <laughs> that is it attempting to adjust to your Zoom by that? saying you're using a phone. <laughs> oh, well, well, check it out. It, it can bunch everything over here. Mm -hmm. yeah. On Zoom, poorly. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> well, I enjoyed running it, running it with uh, um, the ICE window manager. It also comes with XFCE and several others. And the only sad thing is when testing this distro, I wish I had a blank DVD-R, um, but I only had a CDR available, so I couldn't put put one on my older um, i586 machines uh, because the ISO is way too big. It's over three yeah. gigabytes. <laughs> it was way too big, and um, so I'm it actually. Uses XFCE. <laughs> Well, it has 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 several desktops, and that is one of them. Yes, Ben. 
<laughs> so. iOS uses XFCE as the desktop environment. This is a prime yeah. choice. Okay, that is the default. Yes, <laughs> yes, but you can use you can use Ice Ice Worm. They've configured as well, and. Um, uh, but I'm actually looking forward to the PsychOS 486 implementation that they're going to be doing for i486, which I'm sure will be a lot smaller, and I'll be able to get them on on uh, live CDRs. And actually, I was going to show you, I have PsychOS <laughs> this list. <laughs> These are CDRs for my vintage computers, and. Um, um, I would like to get a copy of uh, Psycho S uh, that'll fit on a CDR <laughs> for my old computers. That's a lot of it's handwriting the... on those. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Actually, some of these, um, uh, uh, some of these, you know, I made the artwork for like the, the Morphix and the Dynabolic Linux. And there's Nopix down here in the bottom. <laughs> but... <laughs> so anyways, oh, there it is. <laughs> yes. There's Ladies website. and gentlemen, you got to take a look at this trailer because... This it, it's its own special thing now, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's always interesting to see what I am guessing a twenty-something-year-old uh, thinks the eighties looked like. Uh, <laughs> this is what the eighties looked like. This is what the eighties looked like in movies and marketing and advertisements. Uh, but there it is. It's a an attempt at an eighties trailer. I don't know. Um, what's yeah. the point of this, Pedro? Help me out. <laughs> The point is, yeah, that is like Jill was saying, is so you have a bunch of package DOS box applications that mm -hmm. will do. It comes basic... with lightning, so it can't be. All... Yes, <laughs> lightning in a box or a laptop, whatever the case may be. But yeah, it comes with a bunch of prepackaged apps. That's why the ISO is 3.8 gigabytes and it took a solid minute and a half for it to download. <laughs> Um, but it is, yeah, it's not running systemd. Uh -huh. It's Ooh, one of those uh, dev one uh, derived distros, yes. which is good dev to see that dev one is at least getting something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, they use retrograb to um, package those um, DOS apps. And yeah, there, there's a lot of productivity focused apps pulled from, you know, the late 80s, 90s and early noughties that DOS had uh, still apps going, and uh, they're all included. And it's supposedly, yeah. it runs really well on old laptops. I still have to actually plug the um, USB drive into the T42 because I had, uh, well, I had other laptops to play with this week. Is this like something that you can set up with all the old stuff and to like um, deal with the crushing realism that the world's uh, passed you by and you haven't Moved adapted? On, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I, yeah, I I think that that's <laughs> the point. Okay. So this is something for like recent people who've ended up in the home. Here you go. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The nostalgia, yeah. gross tinted glass people. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen. When yeah. I'm in the home, when I'm old, I'm, I'm finally going to get like a you know chiplet based Threadripper three off eBay. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, a lot of those apps, you know, still can be used for content creation. Some of my old animation a apps are A lot of those apps there. are still in use yeah, by certain exactly. hospitals in a certain country where I'm from. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. If you look behind yes. the counter, it's just like, oh, you're still running DOS, are you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and in fact, they're going to make a, a free DOS version of, of PsychOS called PsychDOS. So that, that, that was really cool to hear. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, don't worry, and, me Doska um, is going to be on. <laughs> well, for those of you who grew up in the BBS days, this is just really, really, really cool. And being able to get your old retro hardware up and running, you know, with 32-bit software, is getting a little harder these days. So <laughs> this is a good option. <laughs> <laughs> hey man people like blinky things you know look the website alone with its own custom <laughs> cursor that's like an rgb strip around a black cursor hey, or a dark background it's like I, huh? i'm gonna stick up for the kid on the web zone because i straight up creeped on that source code i'm like what did you use oh, oh all right you did most of this by hand well done fair enough fair enough i'll give you that <laughs> 
All right. Uh, beautiful people, if you like our um, retro show that we do every week. Yes. So retro. So <laughs> poco retro. Um, check it out. <laughs> Head over to LinuxGameCast.com. Uh, first, we want to thank each and every one of you who helped make this show possible. We have a mm-hmm. Patreon where we have amazing categories, membership levels, they call them, where you can get everything. Just like, hey, man, here's, I want to help you out. And come hop in our Discord. Come take a look at our show notes. There's sex levels. That's terrifying. We got one just for Chicago, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Exactly. <laughs> executive producers, advisors, all the fun stuff. You guys make this. Make this possible. Uh, we got merch. If you want to support us that way, that's awesome. Yet, I will question your sanity for wearing our products on your body. You know what? <laughs> Buy them for people you don't like. Let them wear up. Store it at LinuxGameCast.com. It is Just, brilliant. Yeah. Man. We got Piggins. Yeah. We got Oaks. We got Franks. And uh, Pedro, Jill, Jordan, they have, if you just want to straight up creep on like, what are they, what are they thinking about getting? What do they want? Um, they have Amazon wish list set up. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can, you can, we you, do. You can and just yes. someone actually <laughs> bought me with. something from my Amazon <laughs> wish list this week. Yay. Uh, it was Arthur. <laughs> and Arthur says, Hi, Pedro. It's too hot for me to think of any message to include, so just take it and shove it up your dot 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 and kiss the Nick Cage already, FFS. Good hate, <laughs> Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> nope, still not doing it. Uh, <laughs> oh. And he bought me an iFixit kit. <laughs> and if you uh, awesome, see, uh, if you watch um, Jay's Two Cents on YouTube, it's an iFixit. Yes, yes, he does that. <laughs> <laughs> At yeah. least there's something in there so you can cut yourself with it. I approve. Um, it's not that sharp. <laughs> I try to be supportive and have faith in you for once. And <laughs> come on, you gotta, it's a give and take. <laughs> but yeah, no, this is really nice. And I actually needed it specifically for the, um, like all the spacers and all the jimmies and everything, because the one that I had previously, they were all broken. Mm. Uh, and the Apple um, screwdriver bits. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Pretty sweet. That is awesome. Thanks, everybody. You make this possible. Um, if you're also curious about anything that we have in the studio set up, I have itemized everything. I've put it up on uh, on the web zone. Just go to our about section. There's a list of everything that is uh, stuck together. And I don't really have a personal wish list, but I got one for the studio. If you want to like silently like judge me like i don't think you should buy that but i'm not going to say anything um yeah go check that out it's kind of brilliant and uh cool so we're gonna get in slice of pie Ooh. slice of pie uh, <laughs> applied <laughs> pie yeah this time with wearable goodness yeah <laughs> <laughs> ubuntu launches an excuse for snap. Wait, no. Uh, Ubuntu <laughs> launches appliances for the Raspberry Pi. No, you had it right the first Yay. time. Around. I know I did. That's, I was trying to make it. I, I was trying to make the funny for the people at home, Pedro. <laughs> no, you're not allowed to have fun. <laughs> the Ubuntu appliance portfolio, Tom'sHardware.com. All the center show notes after the fact. Uh, popular links to the latest. Basically, you got to check this out. Honestly, here we go. This is your excuse for snaps. You're like, this is why we're using snaps for this thing then. I'm like, oh, all right, that makes sense. That's pretty cool. Because I, I get it. You're going to be able to install AdGuard, um, OpenHab, Plex, Mosquito, NextCloud, Private Cloud, as long as you have a Raspberry Pi 2. But they recommend something slightly, slightly <laughs> yeah. better. 3B plus or mm-hmm. 4, obviously. Right. Yes. <laughs> and this is going to let you set them up out of the box as appliances now this is all going to be delivered via snap to which again i'm like yeah that makes sense you just install it and you're done right pedro yeah. why do you hate it yeah i don't hate it this is what they're <laughs> good for stop pushing it on the yes. desktop please yes. um the it's like ad guards like okay you just set your own pie hole you push out a snap look it's working well it's not kind of like that go and ask strider exactly how that works <laughs> he's been uh learning containers lately but yeah plex 
that didn't really need a slab um a slab a snap um but it's good to have it and mosquito and next cloud yeah the, those are like purpose built for containers or any kind of like containerized application so yeah, yeah no it's this is a good idea stop pushing it on the desktop please yeah, and this makes sense because they just had a Ubuntu server for the Raspberry Pi um, official version, and they're working on the desktop version. But IoT just makes a whole lot of sense. <laughs> so this is awesome. The like Edgar Dunn Plex that makes sense. Uh, Next Cloud shrug emoji. So yeah, I'm I'm down the hole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stop pushing it on the desktop, please. Why do you <laughs> not like trying like... to get GNOME to run on the Raspberry Pi? <laughs> it actually runs halfway decent. <laughs> I, I would hope so. I mean, yeah, GNOME yeah, they're, they're tweaking it. Five. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Classic GNOME. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that that that's neat. Again, you you have very easy, very easy job selling me on snaps on like IoT appliances or the Raspberry Pi. It's something... Yeah, it's like you have the one yeah. dedicated thing that that bit of hardware needs to do. You can deploy it very easily with a snap, so why wouldn't you? And I'm Thank also you. thinking about yes. the security <laughs> of that. And see, this, again, something auto-updates. Yeah, I'd want it yeah. to for like something that I'm going to throw in a closet somewhere and never think about it in a perfect scenario, never touch again. Yeah, yeah. perfect ah. snap use case. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let, <laughs> let, let's package calculator. <laughs> let's package the system monitor. You know, the thing that you open when your system is going <laughs> very quickly downhill and you need it to open it really quickly so you can kill whatever's misbehaving. You know, yeah, you let's make that take two minutes to load. You know, CentOS 8.1, baby. Red Hat. <laughs> Send. <laughs> Six. Six flat pack apps installed out of the box. Were they like mm. anything critical I, to the system? You know what? You know what? I didn't even look. I was too disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't see through I on mean, here. It really hurt my feeling. Yeah, I, I can see that like the point, like Jill said last week, it's like, oh, if you need to have a bit of software run on 1404 with extended support, yeah, yeah, the snap <laughs> or a flat pack will make a lot of sense for mm -hmm. that use case. But that's not no desktop use well, case. Well, yeah. to roll back, good job, Canonical. <laughs> this yes. makes sense. I dig it. Mm -hmm. uh, Yay. Yes. yes, it does. <laughs> but maybe you have a better use case uh, for Raspberry Pi or you want to use snaps in a different way or... I, I don't know, man. I'm sure we got something right. We got something wrong. Possibly you just want to say hi. Is that terribly difficult? You know, according to some people who just randomly like try to slide in my DMs on Twitter, you know I don't read those. Those are like in the side category that I can't even see when I open my DMs. I hate to break that to you. Like, and it's full. They go to the other. <laughs> it goes to like that little dot that because yeah. it, it'll say, oh, you have a DM? I'm like, okay, I, I, I don't, where's the DM? There's no notification beyond that unless you're like, once, oh, if I go to that, oh, wow. Huh. All right, <laughs> let's just close that. Um, how can you get in contact with us? Yes, mm -hmm. definitely the best way to get in touch with us is to uh, run up to us on the street and cordially say hi. But <laughs> if that's not an option because you live, you know, an entire ocean's way, you can go to linuxgamecast.com, you hit the contact button, fill out the uh, the little form that appears, and make sure you pick LWDW as a show that you'd like to send your feedback to. Otherwise, you may be unwittingly sending some hate mail for yeah. that uh, foul-mouthed uh, Saturday show, what we do. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Yay. Depends on what kind of answer you're looking for, basically. <laughs> this week, this comes oh. from Luke, AV. Mm -hmm controversy yeah man mm -hmm. it's like hi linux gamecast people 
<laughs> this was addressed to um, us for able to be dummies. I just happened yeah. to come across your podcast, 216, while doing a vanity search. You left that part out, but I am helping you out. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> it was a good episode, and you all seem to have lots of fun. Well, we do try not We've to been bore accused ourselves. Of worse. Yeah. <laughs> to tears. Um, I, I know some people are violently against that. I'm like, I can't fall asleep to this. This is not a Linux podcast. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that's why i There's started doing there already Come well, on. <laughs> listen man, that's the whole reason we started it's like how about we do a show that doesn't put people to sleep um yeah <laughs> i just wanted to say that i don't take any responsibility for the antivirus controversy i usually just write about stuff i'm trying to figure out at work and battling the av on linux people is common occurrence I've since been going through a lot of your episodes. Oh, butter us Aww. up, really. And they were really good. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Always glad to find a Linux podcast. Now, I went back and I was like, wait a minute. Oh, that's yeah. handy. You wrote the episode number, so there was a chance of me finding it. Yes. And yes, <laughs> that was about... Um, it was a great article. This atrocious, it was a, poorly yeah. written article. No. <laughs> barely legible. The itself actually did a very good job of explaining exactly, uh, you know, without yeah. damning any of the companies involved, because it was that article that we talked about where um, he, um, Luke, had uh, set out a bunch of emails to a bunch of different companies, and Canonical and Red Hat replied and said that no you shouldn't use an, an antivirus uh, bit of software on desktop Linux. If you have a server, absolutely. But on desktop Linux, you don't need it. Just you know, exercise some common sense. And then he also sent out an email to uh, Symantec, which, Symantec, of course, yeah. big... Symantec? Uh, Symantec, are they, oh, wait, hang on. Are they or or by, System76 as well. Are they so. owned by engines? <laughs> Could be, yeah. <laughs> I, at this point, I don't really care. Uh, Nor do whatever I. or however that is pronounced. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, they replied. And of course, they are AV publishers, sellers, developers, whatever it's you like, want to call them. This is all we so do. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah. Um, you I mean, this is as we said way back when it's not an uncommon it's a logical thought process of like yeah oh that's the first thing which is like what you want people to think at least is like i, I i'm installing Linux. if the first thing i need to do is install the antivirus because that's what i'm supposed to do that that's, that's a, better, a Windows habit. It is, yeah, it's but a I, I habit. Yeah. want that person to keep thinking like that, though. Yeah. Because that's when the inevitable, like, screeching back to Windows, that's one less spam relay. <laughs> <laughs> that's one less botnet member. You know, like, keep thinking like that. I, I want people to ask, like, do I need that? And I'm like, no, you don't on Linux. But. Yeah, it's all Clap AV. They're done. Yeah. <laughs> like, all you need to do is buy a security appliance. I gotta, I gotta, yeah, I'll just put it right in the rack. Peace, mm -hmm. No problem. How much is that going to cost? Don't worry about that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be invoiced in about a month's time. If you got to ask. <laughs> um, beautiful people. We got to bounce out of here. We've overstayed our Yay. time. But let's roll some credits. Thanks, beautiful people. And uh, we'll see you next week. Yay! Sounds about right. Awesome. <laughs> Aw, thank you, Artharon, again for sending Pedro and I fix it kit. <laughs> yeah, that that was actually really really awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! And there's our wonderful advisor, Haplo. Yay, Haplo! And our wonderful executive producers and producers. There's so many of them, you can't name them all in the few minutes we have. Oh, you can. Have. But they're on screen right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're just listening to us on audio, which uh, there's a 90% chance that you probably are, um, yeah. yeah, you can always go watch the video. Things happen on video. Empty promises, I know. <laughs> well, I mean, there's that. Also, if you want to listen to us live at work, hey man, go to twitch.com. 
hit the Linux game. This is a hack, man. Some people don't know about this. I'll say it real quick before we bounce out of here. Twitch mm -hmm. has audio only. Yes, they do. <laughs> so you can listen to us live every Wednesday if that's your back. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> LGC Pro Yay. Tip. Bye, everyone. Yes. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>